Well, welcome back to Sorebox. Certainly want to thank David for the great job he did yesterday, and thank you for your prayers, and special thanks to uh, Sandy, who's doing a great job putting these videos up. Uh, passage for today is James 4, 13 through 17. It says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance, all such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. You know, life, all life, comes from God. Acts 17, 25 through 26 says, He gives life. He gives all, to all life, breath, and all things. He has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. So God has given us life, and he determines when and how long we live. The psalmist prayed in Psalm 90:12, So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Our days here are numbered, and they have a beginning and an end. Life is very short. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. And when we understand this, and then use all of our time wisely in submission to God, that is a heart of wisdom, understanding that God is the author of life, and He has determined our days, and you know they go by quickly as the wind, and then they're gone. And it's not meant to depress us, but it should humble us and cause us to make the most of every day God has given us. The point here in James is that we don't have tomorrow. We only have today. None of us knows or can control the future. This very well could be our last day on the earth. To boast and brag, to become arrogant in our plans, this James says is evil. Why? Because it's prideful and it assumes that I can control something that only God knows and only God can control. Proverbs 16:18 says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall or before stumbling. Sure, we need to plan, we need to prepare for the future. James isn't implying that we shouldn't do that. But we must keep in mind that while we may make all kinds of plans for tomorrow, it is the Lord, as Psalm 37, 23 says, that orders our steps. Only if God gives us another day do we even have the opportunity to carry out our plans, and even then we should do it so in humble submission to God and His will, not ours. Psalm 37, 23 says the steps of a good man are ordered or established by the Lord. In Psalm 40, David recognizes and gives all the glory to God for his every step. He says, He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and He set my feet upon a rock and establish my steps. David knew the depravity and the despair of sin. He also knew the oppression and the relentless attacks from enemies. He lived the lowly, humble life of a shepherd and the lofty reign of being a king, and yet he acknowledged that it was God who established his steps. There was no place to brag or boast about tomorrow. Rather, his boasting was only in what God had done for him and what God was doing for him. David had plans to build a temple for the Lord, yet God did not allow it. He chose David's son Solomon to build it instead, and David submitted to the will of God. Proverbs 16.9 says, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Our dreams and our desires and our plans must remain submissive to the will of God. And we must not become arrogant and prideful with our plans and dreams. Begin to brag and to boast, become proud in our minds over things that hadn't even happened yet. Remember, God resists the proud, and we don't ever want to be in that position. James compares our time here with a vapor. Here only briefly, then it vanishes. And as we get older, we begin to see just how true that is. Life goes by so fast. We can do nothing to slow it down, or for that matter, speed it up. We get one day at a time, and only God knows if we will be here tomorrow, and then what will happen if we are. This should bring about humility in us, and not pride. We are to live our lives, not to please our flesh, but to please God. Our time is a gift from Him. We are stewards of our time, but we need to remember that God owns it. Finally, in verse 7, he says, Knowing to do good and not to do it is sin. You know, we can actually sin by doing nothing. As I've said before, it's not so much what we don't know, but it's simply obeying and doing the parts we do know. As we've, as we've discussed before, God has prepared good works beforehand for each of us to walk in to do. To know that we can do good for someone and yet ignore the need, it's sin for us. 
maybe it's just it's just to pray for someone or to be a friend to someone that it's a, that is a bit different or unpopular. Maybe it's serving at church or witnessing to someone at school or work. Just think how different the world would be if we all did the good we knew to do. One day at a time, one good deed at a time, is led by the Spirit of God and done with humility and with love. You know, that's a good verse for all of us to to memorize. This verse here, 17. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. A good reminder that God has placed the good works for each of us to walk in. We just simply need to be obedient and walk in them. God bless you. Hope to see you back here tomorrow at Swordbox.